Hey everyone, for today's quick video, I am going to be using the SMD DD1 with the Grundig GX3800 so we can actually see at what point this preamp is distorting and what the real voltage is. I wanted to do this a couple weeks ago when I did my review, I put this radio on display, but our uh, SMDD1 was not working properly. So we got another one. So let's check this out and see what it's really actually doing. All right, so I got my volume at zero. I got my uh, SMDD1 plugged into the subwoofer preamp output. I'm gonna start turning the volume up until 40 Hertz is detected. There it is. Keep turning it up and we should get some kind of voltage reading on this. No voltage reading, but it distorts at 35 on the subwoofer preamp, which tells me this is below one volt on the subwoofer preamp, which is a far cry from the four volts that they rate the set. I mean, that's just, that's unacceptable to, to label a product four volt when you're not even getting one at nearly max volume. All right, let me turn this back down and let's try the front preamp output. All right, we're on the front preamp now. I'm gonna start turning that volume up until 40 Hertz is detected. There it is. Keep going. Oops. This is bizarre. Barely getting one volt, but no distortion on the front preamp at max volume. Let's try rear preamp and see what we get. Make sure that track's still playing. Turn it up. Let's see what happens. There's 40 hertz. This thing has no voltage. Wow. That's that's just sad. All right, guys, so I totally forgot to do the second part of that test with the one kilohertz test tone frequency. So I'm gonna do that right now. I've got that playing through the subwoofer preamp output. I did turn the crossover on the head unit off and we're gonna turn up the volume and see what happens. Frequency is detected. We got like no voltage distortion at 35. I don't get why sometimes this thing detects voltage and other times it doesn't. I don't know if it's just because the voltage is so low, it's having a hard time detecting it, but it seems like if I restart it, we'll be able to get a reading. I think it's just eaten through batteries. All right, let's try this again. Frequency is detected. There we go. 1.2, 1.4, 1.4 is the max this thing is detecting. And distortion at exactly 35 on the subwoofer preamp output. Let's switch from the subwoofer to the front. Press play. Let's turn it up. Detected. Not getting any voltage now. I really don't have an explanation for that. Why sometimes when I do this, it gives me a reading and other times it doesn't. I really don't think I should have to restart this thing every time to get a reading, but that seems to be what's happening. And this is my second one. Let's see what happens if I turn it off. And turn it back on. Okay, can we get a voltage reading? Barely. There we go. 1.4. That's where it maxes out. No distortion all the way up. Lame. That is lame. This thing is being a little lame too. I don't know why I have to restart it every time to get a reading. I'm thinking it, it's probably just because the voltage is so low on the preamp that it barely detects it. Try it again for the rear preamp, see if it's consistent. Turning it up. Frequency detected. 
connected. There's a little bit of voltage there. 1.3 was the max. All the way up at 40, no distortion detected. Hold up. I do not understand why I was getting four volts when I was testing that GX3800 with the fluke meter on my display, but not getting it with this tool on my test bench. So I decided to go ahead and just, you know, double check what I was doing with the fluke meter on my display unit just to make sure I wasn't missing anything and screw something up when I was trying to measure that really quickly. And it really is four volt, as you can see. All right, so I have the Grundig hooked up. I got the subwoofer preamp hooked up. I got 40 hertz playing through the radio and I put the volume on the radio at 34, since that's where we were getting distortion at 35. Let me clip this in here, put this guy on. Yeah, I'm getting 4.44 volts on the subwoofer preamp with my Fluke MD88 meter at volume 34. So I don't know what's up with that SMDD plus, I can't even say the tool right, SMDD one plus that wasn't getting any reading. See that? 4.44, and that's just fluctuating because my hand is shifting because I'm trying to do this one-handed on the sub output. So now I'm gonna check the front pre-out. I have the volume all the way up, which was not detecting distortion, and that is uh, 1,000 hertz, 4.55 volts. So this is a four volt head unit, despite what my other tool told us. Retested everything, and we're actually getting more voltage on the Grundig than I was getting on the Alpine ILX 407, which makes even less sense, right? So I was getting 3.2 volts with this on the ILX 407, but with my Fluke, I was getting like 4.14 volts on the ILX 407. And then on the Grundig, I was only getting like 1.4 max with this. But then with my Fluke, I was getting between uh, 4.23 to 4.44 volts on the Grundig unit. So I really don't know what to make of this. I don't know where the discrepancy is. I don't know if I just have another defective SMDD One Plus. You know, I did buy it from Amazon. I don't know if they're an authorized dealer. I don't know if I'm just getting shipped B stock repaired units and if I should be buying it direct from another authorized reseller. I don't know what's going on. It's a shame because, you know, I really wanted to, to love using this tool because it would make my life easier, make our text lives easier. It's really quick and simple and much easier to just handle than the fluke meter and the little probes and getting the clips in the right way. But either way, I enjoyed making this video. I, I thought it was a great learning experience. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and learned from it as well. And I'm sure if you've got you know questions about it, just leave it in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer any questions you guys might have. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please help me out by hitting that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. We do weekly posts on installation tips and tricks, installs here in the shop, and product reviews. So thanks so much for watching everyone. I'm gonna to stick to my original conclusion that the Grundig GX3800 is a great value. And I hope to see you guys next time.